Hi everyone and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Nikki and I am the maker behind the blog SewUprising.com as well as the maker behind Sew Uprising Handmade, my small accessories line. Today I wanted to share with you a really quick tutorial for how I do easy knit binding that isn't bulky on things like baby clothes or athletic tops or anything else where you want a really nice finish. Today I am working on sewing up a knotted baby gown out of this beautiful European cotton spandex eucalyptus print from Bow Button Fabrics. I'll be sure to link the pattern and the fabric down below. And this particular pattern is completely finished in knit binding. So the neckline on both sides, the tiny little sleeves, as well as the over-exaggerated hem are all finished in knit binding. And that used to scare the crap out of me until I found this technique and made it so much easier for myself, which is what I'm going to show you today. When I switched and started doing my binding this way, it got a lot easier. It resulted in a lot less bulky of a finish, which is great, especially for tiny items like this, and it takes a lot less time. But like any sewing technique, it's going to take some practice to get the hang of, so make sure you do not start with your precious fabrics on a pattern you really, really want to work out. Find some scraps, find some time to practice, and I'm sure you'll be able to get the hang of it. I also want to note that it is important on to use this type of technique. You are using a knit fabric that doesn't fray. So no flannels, no wovens, nothing like that. You want a knit fabric and a medium weight. Something like this European cotton spandex here. Um, rayon spandexes, jerseys, sometimes double brush polys are all great choices for something like this. You don't want anything too, too light and drapey, and you don't want anything too heavy like a ponte either, because that'll just get really kind of bulky. So find a good medium weight with good drape and good recovery, and that's all you really need. Now for my binding, I like to use 1 and 3 eighths inch wide binding strips, and then I use a 3 eighths inch seam allowance on my first seam to make sure everything stays consistent. Those are the measurements that work for me. You might need to adjust that for you or your pattern, but just know that that's what I go with. And often, even if a pattern calls for a thinner or a thicker binding, I adjust and use this just because I really like the way it looks. Totally personal preference, whatever works for you. Another thing to keep in mind is that I am going to be using my brother cover stitch to sew this binding. If you do not have a cover stitch, that is totally okay. I used a twin needle with this technique for years and it works just fine. The way it works so well is because we're using that knit binding that doesn't fray. So. Make sure you have that good knit fabric, a twin needle or a cover stitch, all of your regular basic sewing notions, and that's all you really need. Let's jump right in. So here's how we're going to get started. Right now I am working on the front of my little gown. So I have my front main body piece, and I have my front binding piece here cut on the fold. I have them both marked at the center with a pin, and I'm going to start there. The first thing we're going to do is take our binding piece and put it right side down on top of our fabric. So the right sides will be together and the pins will line up. I then like to take one of the pins out and slide the other pin in so that they are connected at that spot. Then going to grab some pins or some clips, whatever you prefer, and pin them up at the shoulder seams as well so that everything is nice and secure. We don't have to worry about things moving around when we're at the sewing machine. All right. So now that those are done, I'm going to go to my sewing machine, my regular sewing machine, and I'm going to use a straight stitch on a little bit of a lengthened setting to stitch a 3 8 inch seam all the way around this binding here. So as I'm doing that, I'm going to be adjusting my binding so it folds up. You can definitely put more pins along here if you'd like if that makes it easier for you when you're sewing. I usually just do the two and then I use my hands to kind of move it as I go through. So again the first step is going to be sewing right along this top neckline using a 3 8 inch straight seam using a little bit longer of a stitch than you normally would. I'll do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so there you can see my seam there. It's a little wobbly, of course, from where we go, 
but there's my line of stitching right there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I am going to cut just tiny little snips right here, not even like to the seam line. I'm just going to cut little notches so that that folds a little easier on the next step. And I don't even do that many. I usually just do five, maybe six, kind of spread out along the curve. What this does is allow the fabric a little bit more give when we stitch it. So our next step is going to be to head over to our ironing board and we are going to iron this piece straight up like this. We're not going to touch the seam allowance, so it's just going to be hidden there. We are going to iron and press this piece straight up so it looks like this. Here you're going to see me using a small acrylic ruler to kind of press that seam up. This is totally optional. I just like to do it because I find when the fabric cools in the same position you pressed it, it stays better and it's hot on my fingers, which is why I use the ruler. All right, and here is my ironed piece. So the next step is what we are going to want all of those pins for. On this step, be very generous with your pins. So really all we're going to do is we're going to take this top edge and we are going to fold it to the back so it just barely passes your seam line and pin in place. Your seam allowance from the first stitch will be encased in the fabric. So there you can see my seam allowance from the first and you can see how the binding wraps fully and encases that seam allowance. So I'm just going to take a moment and pin all the way across. And if you had a even seam allowance on your first step, it should fold nice and easily all the way around. And again, you just want to check every couple inches or so and make sure that your seam allowance is still tucked in there and that you're hitting the right spot. You can see here, my seam allowance got a little bunchy, so we'll fix that. And then we'll fold and we'll pin. You can see, I like to pin, <laughs> or clip, I guess, in this. I like holding it in place. Making sure it is not going to move the whole time I'm sewing it and then everything will be front. So there's what it looks from the front. You can see that nice binding line. If we flip it over, you can see a water spot from where I was ironing and that all of the seam allowance is encased back there. So, we won't have any exposed seam allowance from the first seam. We're now going to take this over to our cover stitch or our twin needle, um, whichever you have. Both work perfectly fine. And we're going to stitch down this binding. You want to stitch so that your outside needle is about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. So we're going to be stitching on the binding, not on the piece itself, but on the binding, so that your needle is about an eighth of an inch away. I'll go ahead and show you that as I do it. Okay, and here is what it looks like all done. So this is the front, obviously, and you can see how I stitched. Ignore my little iron spots there. We'll get that out in a minute. And I went all the way across the front. And now when you flip it over to the back, the ideal goal is to have it look like it does here, where you catch that raw seam under the stitches. However, if there's spots like this, where it goes out from it a little bit, it's totally fine leave it. It's okay. That's why we use a non-fraying knit so that that doesn't matter. Again, if it looks like this, that's perfect. If it looks like this, forget about it. It's good enough. And that is all there is to it. Simple, easy, non-bulky, but a very professional and beautiful looking finish.
Thank you for taking the time to hang out with me today on my channel. If you like what you see and you'd like more tutorials, feel free to subscribe and let me know down below what you'd be interested in seeing. Otherwise, have a great day. Happy sewing.